6.39, good morning to you. This is Breakfast with Stephen and Anne. Let's take a look at today's newspaper front pages. And we'll go to the I first. Tories fear wipeout after three weeks of trust as Prime Minister. Uh, the Guardian says Liz Truss is going to hold emergency talks with the head of Britain's independent fiscal watchdog. Well, that's happening today. And then the Telegraph runs with the news that benefit payments are set to fall in real terms after a government initiative to cut spending. The Express, uh, their headline says the Queen died peacefully of old age with her children Charles and Anne beside her. The Daily Star is a bit bizarre today. On its front page it says that we're all going to be taken over by robots um, and it's going to be as bad as a nuclear war. I think they've just been watching too many movies. Yeah, well... Science friction, they say. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least it's something different. Well, there is real concern about AI. Everyone talks about AI. It doesn't actually exist yet. No, Not actually it doesn't. A thing. It's never been proven, has no, it? No, but when it does happen, they'll learn exponentially and then decide that we don't need it They have all. to pass the Turing test, they do. don't they? Yeah. No one's ever passed it yet. No. Well, no machine has ever passed well, it yet. Mm. So there Doesn't you go. It. No sentience there yet. Um, let's go through the papers then with Benjamin Butterworth from the Eye and former Conservative advisor Claire Pearsall. Good to see you both. Morning, both. Good morning. Um, let's kick off with the Eye, should we, Benjamin? And um, three weeks of trust as Prime Minister. It doesn't seem to be going too well so far. No, three weeks of trust, and, you know, there was 10 days of mourning in that period, so she's had, I think this is her 13th uh, working day as Prime Minister, technically speaking, so it, it's quite the feat that, according to this poll that's on the front page of the Eye and other papers, uh, Labour is on 54%, that's a 33% lead, the biggest ever recorded by YouGov. And I think what's more concerning for Liz Truss and the Conservatives is how Labour has got to this figure of 54%. Because, you know, sometimes parties have terrible results. Labour was, you know, in the low 20s, as the Tories are right now, shortly before Gordon Brown didn't do too badly in the 2010 election. But if you look at, if you drill down into this, 17% of that, that gain is from people that are directly switching from Conservative voters to being prospective Labour voters. So these are the people that matter. It's not sort of fringe people or Lib Dems or Greens piling on, which is what Jeremy Corbyn generally saw his poll boosts from. These are Tories that, well, people that voted Tory that no longer wish to. And you look at things like the lead on the economy. They've got a 17% lead there. Now, it's only a couple of months ago that Labour was in, in it was the most popular party on the economy for the first time in 12 years. Now it's got a massive lead. It's ahead on the NHS. It's ahead on being in touch with people's normal lives. It's ahead on who people think will make the better prime minister. And so I would say that while often you can dismiss polls at this point in a premiership, if you dig down, the results are really, really bad for Liz Truss and the Tories. Mm. And I think because she's just become prime minister, this is the one moment when people are looking, right? They pay attention because they want to know what they think, what they're going to do. And she's used that one moment to do just about the worst thing imaginable. Oh, it's interesting. Charles has been in touch. Morning, Charles, who says, I think the government has got it the wrong way round. They seem to be bringing in policies guaranteed to get them voted out of office. <laughs> I mean, that's quite a... Uh, yes, I'm afraid I have to uh, agree with that because it, it is quite difficult to understand quite what she is actually going for because it is perhaps the worst set of polls I have ever seen at this point in a party's history. To have a new leader in for 13 days and to, to be on this kind of deficit. But you could say how brave, how brave. She's done something that she believes, and, and quasi Quartin clearly, uh, believe is the right thing to do, even if it's going to be unpopular at first. Is that brave? I th there is some bravery there, and I did start going out defending this, saying it was a bold budget, because we had to do something different. You can't just keep repeating the mm. budgets of previous because it hasn't worked and we have been in a rut and it has been stagnant and i think some of this lead that benjamin was just talking about we've just had labor party conference mm. so everybody has seen yeah but it's a massive lead points isn't it? i know and i'm you not i'm not trying to make it all out that, i'm not blaming <laughs> starmer as some of my party have blamed for everything but i do think that there is a natural bounce after a party conference doesn't matter whose party conference it is because those politicians have been out there mm. they've been speaking they've given their big speeches on the stage and set out policies and people go oh yes i remember 
blogs speak. I wonder I what sort of reception it. she will get well, at her conference. Well, I think this is going to be a lot more tricky to pull off. I really do. But Labour had nothing to lose going into theirs. We have absolutely everything. Well, and it's you're... interesting because on the Times, I mean, she's it, it, it sort of I mean, she did these um, radio. Uh, interviews, didn't she? did she, a, a round of local radio, yeah. BBC um, local radio. Where she interviews. just kept saying she has the right plan. And I think we are stuck in that rut of perhaps if you keep saying it, it will become true. <laughs> and unfortunately, the media around yesterday just proved that you can't keep parroting the same lines. And I think what was interesting, every single broadcast that she did, the same information came out didn't matter what the question was that she was asked. Mm. And there seems to be no life, no personality, no admittance that she could see things were wrong. And I think that goes down really badly. I also think she underestimated hugely local regional radio stations. Why do you think she did it? Why do you think she did local radio? Well, I think, I suspect because they got five minutes each and so it's, you know, a lot harder to dig deeper into the problems in five minutes and so I suspect she thought it was an easier ride. You know, it is a tradition that Tory leaders do these local radio rounds just ahead of the conference. I think David Cameron was particularly keen on them. But I think what she misjudged is that you know, when you have a, a national political editor or presenter, they often, particularly, you know, this set of Conservative politicians, they go, oh, well, you're too Westminster bubble, you don't understand the real issues. Well, you can't say that to someone from, you know, Radio Tees. It's a lot harder. And I think that when they were getting their listeners to put questions, when they were quoting questions from their listeners, you know, it was much harder for her to rebuff. But what stunned me was the way that she didn't seem able to explain her ideas. You know, I definitely believe that she's a very intelligent woman. We hear that she's a very hard-working person. And so I'm flabbergasted that she seems incapable of explaining what she did, why she did, and what's going to happen. And I think that's a basic that, that everyone should, should expect. And if she can't do that now, when she's setting out ideas that she had most of summer to plan for, then what's it going to be like if something comes unexpectedly? Yeah. Uh, well, let's move away from all that, just for a bit, because I know we'll be coming back to it a lot mm -hmm. this morning. Yes. Claire, can we have a look at the front of the Express, um, where we've had the, the death certificate of... Queen Elizabeth. She died from old age, apparently. She did, and I actually think that's just the loveliest. That I know, and I know that oh, sounds no. bizarre, oh, but yes. just to put it down to old age, she was 96, and I think we could all see that she was incredibly frail, but carried on working to the last minute. And I didn't want my queen to die of anything nasty and horrible, and I think old age mm. is a really graceful, peaceful way. It's quite uh, comforting even. in a way for, for us, isn't it? It is, mm. it is. I think the time is interesting, 3.10pm, and we, obviously the country didn't find out until much later, but some of her family didn't find out until some time mm. after that. But it was... Well, the PM was told at 4.30. Yeah, so that's what I understand the country so, told at 6.30. But it seems that some of the family members, I think Harry in particular, found out roughly around the same time as the rest of the country. But she was there with Charles and with Anne. And I just, I think this is a perfect way mm. to sort of finish this chapter of our history. Isn't, and the, isn't the death certificate itself interesting? It is. Because, uh, I mean, it records everything it has to. Princess Anne um, signed this sort of witness bit. And it said for occupation, it said Her Majesty the Queen. Yes. That was her occupation. That was her occupation, to list out all of the names of everybody mm. and your, you know, your residence address is Windsor Castle. I mean, it's just beautiful, yeah. really, for something that's so sad. I think this is such a fitting tribute, and it's just so so lovely that they've put it out there for us to yeah. see. It is not. I mean, my grandma died of old age. Yes, yeah. what was on um, hers? Yeah, it was on hers, and we also. Oh, she'd be really pleased at that. Yes, yes. You know, it's quite a nice it thing. Is, it, is, it, is, yes. it is an achievement, and it's and it's a it's a quiet and peaceful and graceful way, I think, to yes. to leave. It's natural, isn't it? Yeah, it is, and I, I just think it's absolutely beautiful, and I love the fact that they keep printing that photograph of her still working. Mm. Mm. The, you know, the almost day. Just two days before we lost yeah. her. Yeah, yeah. it and is I, incredible. Yeah, I think also 
it, it was sort of watching her final years was watching natural death. It was someone simply slowing down, yes. you know, still enjoying life but not being able to do as much and explaining that to the country and the rest of the world as she did in those last couple of Gosh, you know, two years. Gosh, that we could all do that. Oh, I mean, yes. yeah. So many people, you think, particularly during COVID and everything, had terrible ends to their life. Yeah. Mm. And thank goodness the Queen, uh, at least, she got through COVID, didn't she? And uh, she, yeah, but she... Um, still stayed sharp. I think yes. That was still stayed very she, sharp. And she got hold of the new technology and was... Yeah, she was brilliant video on Zoom and everything, and with people. She? And I just think that's fantastic. And to actually keep going long enough to see the old Prime Minister out and the new Prime well, Minister in. Exactly. And then, you know to go and die of old age. Yes, it's the best possible thing. To but I think also, I mean, there's no disputing her commitment to her work, that she did that two days before, and she got a red box the day before, but it was the Zoom meeting she cancelled that evening, saying she was tired. But I think it, it also shows how, you know, my, your mind can affect how long you live. You know, the fact that she lived to do that last duty seems like less than a coincidence. Yes. She was carrying on to get the job do done. It. Oh, and yeah. She was ready to go. I think so. I think that's I think true. So. For a lot of older people, they, they yeah. recognise that there's a job a to do. They keep going mm. they until a certain They don't like to give up, mm. do they? Well, you, things you've things got to give up now. We're out of time. Claire, Benjamin, we'll see you a little bit later on. Thank you very do much. Do come indeed. back. <laughs> <laughs>